Okay, this is episode 5 on uh, my music tutorials. To, in this episode, we're going to actually split we're going to actually split these uh, instruments up separately into separate patterns because right now they're all into one pattern. As you can see, there's no other patterns, it's just it's just first loop, which I will probably unname in a second and I'll show you why. So we're going to split these up and we're going to put it into another feature in here called the playlist where we can actually position them to create a song so it's not just a you know con it's not just a constant loop. You we're actually going to add uh, different parts to different points so it's not just this continuously. So uh, first thing I should probably do is disable that. So the the first thing we got to do is get familiar with how to split them in the first place and I'm going to keep it named for once, but I'm going to undo it so you can uh, we can fix it. Don't if you're following along, don't don't do this part without renaming this first. This uh, the the pattern name, and I'll show you why. If if we go ahead and hit split by channel down here, which will uh, split each channel into its own individual pattern, keeping the same settings per channel, it will do this. And since we named it, it's going to be whatever the first pattern was named and then the name of the the channel but to undo that let's go ahead and undo that it should have undid it why didn't it undo it okay i'm just gonna have to reload it sorry for some reason it uh okay anyway now if we want to make it so now i'm just gonna go ahead and middle click and unname that and uh make it just pattern one and now if i split there we go see now it's just named by each individual channel which i enjoy and it'd be smart to name all of these to name all your instruments and make your patterns will automatically be named whatever the instruments called which is a huge help for not having to rename a hundred things later so take that into consideration before you split if you're going to do it this method and uh, what we need to do now since we have them all split up and uh, each one's on its individual channel as you can see we're going to actually put it into a thing called the playlist so how to get to the playlist it's actually right next to the step sequencer and the shortcut is F5 apparently. Go ahead and open this and it says view playlist and you'll bring up this menu. And as with the piano roll, I'm pretty sure you can customize this at all uh, this as well and view, yes you can. Grid color and uh, you can also customize your uh, clips which we'll get to in a second. Now in here it looks similar to the piano roll but not quite and I I made a color difference because sometimes I get confused. Don't ask how but I do. But um, let's go ahead and get familiar with how this works. Up here the same buttons except for right in this section which I'll explain a little bit of. Um, these buttons are pretty much the same, they do the same properties so those won't be too much of a hassle. But uh, here's where you select your clips that we split up there. And the reason why we split them is so we can individually pick and as you see left click to place, right click to delete, same as the piano roll. And you can see we have each individual clicked and clip and luckily they're labeled as well. So. Uh, and as you, uh, this is the thing that we come back uh, earlier, um, the kick is is or uh, yellow, since we uh, colored the clip, the, the I'm sorry, the pattern kick yellow, it comes up in here as a clip that's yellow. So if we undo that, which we can't do because, okay, this is going to be a bit difficult. How to oh, stupid from right here. Good enough. As you, uh, oh, oop, I did the wrong thing. I can't believe that. I actually colored it the wrong thing. If we go here and color it, let's say uh, the normal color, as you can see, it goes back to. It's a little green, but it's it's back to about the original color. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this back up here because that's where I like it. Put it wherever you want. I just like it there. So now that we've uh, figured some other extra little colorful tips. Colors can come into handy too later on if you want to color coat certain things that look similar and you don't have time to read it. We'll get to that later though. Well, not really. can't really get to that later. It's very simple to understand but I'll explain it a little better in depth. So anyway, what we're going to do is uh, since we labeled these, it's a lot easier to select so it's not just a bunch of random letters and underscores like these. Sure, you can, you can understand these but if you get custom kits and they're not named correctly, it's very very irritating to figure out which one you gotta put because they're all named weird and you don't know what what it is unless you have a really good memory anyway what we're gonna do here is uh, select some and put them on here and we'll do a little do a little song so and uh, you can also name these and color code these as well if you middle click so if you wanna name it like kick you know let's name them all snare shake 07 
at CL stream. There. Now we can even see which uh, section we're going to put it in. It doesn't matter if these are named and you play them, it's still going to play in, in here. And uh, here's the next thing where it says pattern and song. Here's how you differentiate this song will be played. You can see this little arrow spawned down there and it appeared. You can, uh, if you press song, it's going to play in the playlist. If you play pattern, it's going to play whatever's the uh, current pattern selected. So uh, green is song and red is pattern. See, now it's not going, but it's playing the kick and the thing where I select snare. See, plays the snare. So let's go ahead and uh, start a little song here. Let's get the snare going. Let's make it so it adds on over time. Let's make it so it adds on over time. So uh, let's make shake next. Then, oop. Hat CL. And uh, a couple things I should say. Whatever pattern you click on that's in here, as you can see at the top, it automatically selects that. So if you don't want to continuously go dot drop down, you can just say, oh, hat seals out. So let's go ahead and copy it. Shakes out. Let's go ahead and copy that by select, uh, clicking on it, dragging, and just uh, click again. Snare. Quick tips to getting it done faster. Uh, we need the string as well, so let's go ahead and put that there. Let's see what this sounds like. It just slowly adds on. So I'm not going to sound too good, but it's going to kick, to snare, to shake, to hats, to string. Let's go ahead and try this. And uh, I guess I should demonstrate this as well. Now that we got we got a little idea of how you can put a song together, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and uh, figure out how to make it loop. As in the piano roll, when you oh no, I'm sorry, when you have a stretchable note, how you can do it in Edison to be able to have the red lines here and have it start all the way here, go all the way across. Have all the way go across and then continue in the loop and continue as if it was a loop. We can also do that in the playlist. And how you do that is you go in the little drop down menu, you go to time markers, and you go play song loop. And this little thing will appear in the black line, in the black uh, time bar or whatever you want to call it, I guess. You can go ahead and uh, when the little cursor of dragon appears, you can go ahead and drag it wherever you want. So let's say we wanted it to be there. That means after it starts from here, wherever you place this thing to start, you can do that. And uh, the same rules apply for piano roll, zooming in and out. And the same thing with these, but I like 100%. So uh, when uh, when it goes all the way across, so we want to start here. Well, as soon as it gets to here, it'll continuously loop at that point. So it should loop. So it has the same effect, and I'm pretty sure you can rename these as well. So you can uh, right-click and hit rename. Can't color code it, but you can rename it. And uh, apparently you can do skips and pauses, loops, a uh, bunch, <coughs> bunch of different actions. So let me, let me try pause. Nice. So you can automatically make it pause wherever you want. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of this, though, because I don't need it. You can keep it if you want. A uh, couple of rules for uh, auto-dragging. You can right-click in, right, in, the, in the black box and drag along to get it easier, or you can just... Uh, use the drag tool up here and just do it this way if you want individual ones selected but uh, if you right click it will delete if you hold right click and drag it will delete anything in its path so keep note of that now now that we've uh, learned how to pretty much place our after uh, we've learned how to split our our pattern our main pattern up into individual patterns and uh, be able to place each individual pattern in into the uh, into the playlist. So what we're so now, if we want to add more to the song and we don't have our main loop anymore, I don't, I'm not sure we can revert back, but we can do this. Let's say we get a new pattern here. So this little this new pattern button right here, we're gonna go ahead and hit that, and let's call it let's call it crash. I'm gonna teach you a couple things here. Crash. No point in increasing this because we're going to do a waveform instead, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we've got crash now. So all we got to do is let's. Well, 
we've got a crash right here. So instead of right clicking, hitting in, open a new sampler channel, let's leave, let's leave the crash a little differently. Let's just go ahead and drag it directly into the playlist and it creates a wave file. And by doing that, we can now precisely zoom in and edit the wave very precisely. And right now I have it on stretch. So right now we can uh, precisely edit the, uh, the wave to be exactly how we want it. But let's say we want to reverse crash. So let's go ahead and hit the, if you double click on the wave, it'll open up the properties menu. And the same goes for any pattern. Well, it opens up whatever the properties main properties is. And since this is a wave file, it's going to open up the properties menu and not the uh, step sequencer or the piano roll. So now that we've got everything set here, we're going to go ahead and hit reverse. And that reverses the wave. Doing this inside the step sequencer rather than having it in waveform is very difficult to place because you have to place it at the correct time for it to start here, reverse all the way up to the point you want it. So this way, we can just go ahead and move it right there. And there you go. We already have it right to the end. It's going to be very loud. Let's go ahead and decrease that. And uh, if it's a little off, like it's a little off the main line, just zoom in as far as you can get and you can do some precise uh, movements. As long as you don't have this enabled, enable clip, uh, note slash clip groups. If that's enabled, then it's going to automatically clip it to the next note. See? Oh, it's not doing it for me now, but it was before. Point being, don't have that enabled. And everything will be okay. Oh, looks like we didn't move this correctly. There we go. We're going to have to edit that now. Here's a great example of having to uh, edit this precisely. There. Oh. There we go. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Now, this is going to be very loud, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, decrease the volume because I know how reverse symbols are. We already know that's very loud, so let's go ahead and try this. Wow, that was really epic, actually. <laughs> um, but what we want is another crash. Let's go ahead and use the same exact crash, but what we're going to have to do is something different. We can't just drag it in because it's going to drag the same one in. We need to right click on this. By the way, you've noticed all of our other instruments are gone, and if we were to go to any other one, they'd all appear. But as soon as we go to crash, uh, we didn't go to crash. As soon as you go to crash, now our crash is gone. What that is, is down here in the channel display filter, it's going to filter either audio clips or insorted. This is considered an audio clip the wave format because it's in an audio clip form rather than a uh, pinpoint. Um, grid. So you can hit all and it'll automatically put it in there, which we have to rename. So let's go ahead and rename the crash. There, it's a lot better. Make this crash. Let's name it crashes, actually, because we're going to have a normal crash. In the no, no, let's just name it crash. Oop, I spelled that wrong, and actually let's make it reverse crash. I put R underscore crash, that's how I remember it, but you can do whatever you want. And, uh, of course, I named this wrong as well. It's supposed to be reverse crash. I'm going to put R underscore crash. Okay, what we're going to have to do here is clone it. And the only way to clone it You know what? Tell you the truth, we don't even need the pattern. Because it's an audio clip, and it's not in a uh, pattern form, so we can actually delete the pattern and just use the audio clip, because when we're up here, we can go ahead and select audio clip sources from the pattern. There's patterns, and there's audio clips. So we can go ahead and do that instead. Quick tips. Sorry I'm getting off topic here, but it's good to learn those things. I'll go over it again in a little bit. We want to clone this, because if we drag this in here, as you can see, it just automatically put a reverse one and we didn't get a new clip. We didn't. We just got the exact same one because it doesn't see it as a separate one. We need to make it a separate one. So we need to right click on the on the on the channel and hit clone. And that'll automatically clone it. And now if we go into here and undo the reverse and name this let's take the two out, take out the R underscore, it'll be a normal crash. And now we have a crash available. See that? That's a good way how to get two of the same instrument in waveform or not, and not have the same settings. No, it's in waveform only, it'll do that. So let's see how this is going to be. Let's do it from the middle. Well, I just realized our, this is a good point for an audio loop, but uh, I don't want to use that. Let's use this instead. If we have a highlight and we right click on the drag and drag it, and you know, right click out to deselect everything but still have this section selected, it will play this over and over again as if it was a loop. Your own personal custom loop. That's actually pretty interesting. Let's do some, let's do a little more epic to make it a little darker but a little heavier. First the crash needs to uh, 
volume needs to be decreased, so go ahead and double click on the wave and decrease the uh, volume a little bit. How much is it now? Now the reverse crash is too much, so go ahead and do that and put it about, about that, I'd say. That's actually pretty cool. So now what we're going to do is double click on the, on the, on the normal crash. We might have to actually select it from here because it seems to be bringing up the reverse crash. Yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and go on the normal crash and let's make it a little deeper in sound. So right here you'll see a section called time stretching in the SMP, in the SMP section, the shape properties and stuff. In time stretching, you can time stretch the wave. So if I increase the time, it will make it right away. As soon as you select it, it's going to make it short as soon as you go up in the but as soon as you increase it, it's going to make it really long and really, really weird sounding. And may I, may I, may I just make this into a crash because I didn't do it yet. And uh, if you right click on this, it's the same thing as a step sequencer, it'll solo it. And if you right click again, it will take it out. And the same thing with muting it. And you can see it actually darkens everything that gets muted. So we're going to go ahead and make that a solo and we're going to check out what it sounds like to uh, make it really dark and not really dark it's so much as just stretching the wave so much that it sounds out of tune and messed up because our time is pretty 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 long so let's go ahead and try it pretty probably couldn't hear it too well but it's uh, very long so let's go ahead and make that shorter Oop. you know I'm just gonna do this It'd be a lot easier Well, if you're into making dark music, this is your thing to get to. Let me put the pitch down a little bit. Oh, thing I should mention here is the uh, there's a difference between the pitch here and the pitch here. The pitch here will time stretch, and uh, you can't see it because I edited this. How remember how I shortened it? It's actually shortening it, so you can't tell. But if the thing was at full capacity the pitch would extend this longer and it'd be longer because the pitch is a uh, this pitch is the overall to squeeze it in the same pitch this one's to extend the pitch and actually make it longer time is much different let's try the hull the hull the time stretch multiplicator multi multiplicator sorry I was having a problem saying that word will do such that but a lot stronger so let's go ahead and make this really long and see it sounds kind of phasey because it's stretching it and stretching the same sound. It's not changing the pitch. It's just stretching the wave of being able to play it all without having any time marks. So basically basically this changes the pitch and extends it. This one extends it without changing the pitch and keeping the same sound. So if we made this really long and made this really dull, it probably would sound a little weird. Kind of sounds like a gong now. But uh, let's go ahead and right click and remove all that and make it all normal. Reset it. Interesting. So, uh, it's a good lesson on uh, how to use, how to fully benefit from, uh, what is this called? The playlist. How to fully benefit from the playlist and actually be able to create your song and split everything up like that. One thing I should also say, if you split everything up and you can't add anything else to it and you're like, well, everything's, everything's all split. How do, I, how do I add something to it to see if it sounds good with everything else? Well, this is a little more complicated. That's why I say try your best to get everything you'd like to have in it inside first before you split it. But here's a quick tip on how to uh, continue to listen to your song without it being weird. I'm not going to actually add this instrument to it. I'm just going to add it temporarily to let it to let it hear, to see how you can do this. So what we're going to have to do is add. And we're going to go ahead and call this. Um, you know, let's not even name it. Let's just keep it like that. Put it to eight because that's our default for everything else. Actually, you know what? We're probably going to actually. Where did I? Oh, I have to actually name it. We're going to call it new. Okay. Then I'll go. Now that we have new, we're going to go ahead and highlight this, delete, you know, deselect. Again, okay, new's highlighted, hover it over this, and you'll see that new has nothing in it. But if we stay under song and we go ahead and select something like the rim or something, let's go ahead and select the rim, uh, add a new sampler channel, 
Actually, you know what? I might actually add this fully to the uh, to the song. Let's not actually color code this one because it's also named this rim, so we don't get confused later. Okay, what we're gonna do is to do this and this and that. Decrease the volume a little bit, about fifty percent. One in the beginning, one in the middle, one in the end. And how you can test this, as long as it's on song and it's hovered to be over this, it'll play as if it was all together. Watch. See that? Got to name this rim. See that? It's playing everything as if it was in there, but it's in the song. That's a quick tip on how to... Uh, be able to still edit the song and add new stuff to it without having to, you know, recompile and place your notes back and all that stuff. So you can even you can even make a song directly from here instead of the step sequencer and then moving it. You can just do it all here originally. So it's all up to how you want to do it. I do it by steps, but it's all up to you. As for the rim, let me let me see something. Put the pitch down on it. Can't even hear it. Put the hull a little bit up, about, about there. Let me see. Ooh. Now it was, it was good where it was. Let's just keep it where it was. Okay. Now that we've added another instrument, we also have that. So that's pretty good. I think we've learned enough today, and I learned enough in this episode anyway. In the next, in the next tutorial, I guess we will cover mixer, how to add the effects to your song and. I wouldn't say like instrument effects, but how to add effects to individual individual patterns to create a uh, like fade, not not really, yeah, fade uh, sound effects, reverb, equalizer, all that good stuff. We're gonna get to that in the next episode. So until the next time.